Okay. Hey, hey, hold on, hold on. Here we go. We're back. Okay, so we took the first derivative, take the second derivative, and what do we do with this? E set equal to zero. Equal to zero. So 12x squared minus 4 equals 0. How do you solve that? Factor out of 4. Uh, okay, so if we factor out of 4, you kind of want to factor out of 4. Why? Why would you not? Why would you not? Because I think you're going to take it. Yeah, because I think you're going to take it. 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 Because so x squared equals one third, right? And then you get plus or minus. And then right, you take the square root of that and you get x equals plus or minus the square root of one third. Which we could simplify to one over root that. three or root three over three, but you know. Okay? So those are our uh, on this chart, those are our, our second derivative zeros. That's gross. Yeah. Uh, now what? Okay, time out. What? Oh, because I just, square root of 1 is just 1, so I just didn't want to write the square root of 1. Lazy. Okay. Um, yes, lazy. All right, so now what? Okay, so if I plug 0 into the uh, second derivative, negative. that's going to come out to be negative. So since this is negative, well, then this is going to be positive, and that's going to be positive. So positive from the second derivative means this over here is concave up. This is concave down, and this is concave up. Okay. And then the uh, right. So the intervals of concavity. This would be concave up from negative infinity to negative one over root three, and from one over root three to infinity. Right, and then concave down from negative 1 over root 3 to 1 over root 3. Now it says, identify the inflection points. And who called us on this yesterday? Who was it, Mary? Okay, this, we have not identified the inflection points. We've identified the x values of the inflection points, but we need to figure out what the y values are also. They can do it on their own. The original function, okay? So you plug it into the original function. Um, so if you plug in negative 1 over root 3 to the 4, that's going to be uh, 1 ninth, I feel like. Because if you square the square root, you get 1 third, right? And if you square it again, you'll get 1 ninth. I don't know. Trust me, I'm a doctor. Uh, and then that's going to be 2 times 1 third uh, plus 3. Um, so 1 ninth minus 6 ninths plus 27 ninths is a total of how many ninths? 22 ninths? Is that right? No, sir. Too many ninths. Too many ninths. Uh, which is the same as 2... 3 or 3 and 4 ninths. 3. No, not 3. No, 9 times 3 is 27. Right, so <laughs> two, 2 is 4 ninths. Two point four repeating. Yeah. Wait, what? Good. Three times nine going twenty-seven. That's nine. Um, yeah, okay. that's a point. So right. So one point of inflection is going to be at negative one root three comma two and four ninths, and the other one by symmetry because if I plug this in, since both of these are even powers, it's going to come out to be the same thing. So the other one is one over root three uh, two and four ninths. So positive. And negative, same thing. So those are my two points of inflection. Okay? All right? Okay, what's happening now, Jefferson? You're controlling the board. 12? C? Yeah, just C. 12C. Just C, again. Oh, okay, so we already have the first derivative from yesterday? Yeah. And it was, what, something on top? We have a six, okay. six x over x squared plus three squared. Okay, so now we have to take the derivative of that, and that's kind of icky, but we can take shortcut because of this exponent here. I can rewrite this as six x times x squared plus three for the negative second. 
Okay, and then I don't have to use the quotient rule, but I'm going to have to use the chain rule in the product rule, so it's not going to be uh, pretty, but uh, you know, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, unless you guys want to use the quotient rule instead. No. no? You want to use A plus S quotient rule? No, no, no. Alright, you're going to get. Okay. Why do you do Alright, so the first one. Yeah, you're right. The bottom doesn't matter because of this. Yeah. Uh, too late. First one times the derivative of the second one. What's the derivative of this? Negative 2x squared plus 3 times 2x. Nope. Negative 2x. Negative 2x. So the negative third. Oh, yeah. Times two 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 right. Times 2x. Okay. So that was 1v2. That's all. Uh -huh. Times that plus. Never mind. The second one <laughs> times the derivative of the first. What's the derivative of the first one? Six. Yeah, maybe we should have gone with the first one. Yeah. It's I guess so, yeah. Uh, but we have some simplifying we have to do here now. So 6x times negative 2 times 2x. I'm multiplying all the things together that don't have a negative x. <coughs> so that gives me negative 24x squared over x squared plus 3 to the third. How do you like that? You okay with that? All right. Plus 6 over x squared plus 3 squared. And the only thing that's bad about this is that now we have to get a common denominator. It's okay. It's not that big of a deal because what's my common denominator going to be? x plus 3. x squared plus 3 to the third power. This one is just one short of being a winner. So I'm going to multiply this by x plus 3 and I'm going to multiply this by x plus 3. And that's going to give me um, negative 24x squared plus 6x plus 18 all over x squared plus 3. Okay. Uh, this guy right here on top, so you can take and set that equal to 0, pull out a 6, you like that, don't you? Just factor out that number right to start with. Uh, I don't care. You can do quadratic formula. You can pull out a 6 and then, you know, go from there. You can complete the square. Um, somebody who is uh, one of the many advanced students in this class, just tell me what x has to equal when this is 0. 6. Just do it. I'm not, you're not, it's not a guessing. I'm not going shout out numbers until I say, like, no. do it. Wait, what I'm saying is I don't want to do no. that on the board. How did you, you not know that I didn't? Oh, I didn't. It just was the look on your face. You're just kind of like six. Like, <laughs> did you do it? Six. Did you do it? Non-real answer. Non-real answer. Six. Both. Not what I. Oh, six. Oh, it's six. In, it's in negative form, probably. I don't know. Okay, no, 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 I got okay, so so far we have a vote for six. Yes. For negative three fourths and one. Negative three fourths and one. And for a non-real answer, you're changing your vote. Yeah, because I. Do you have my calculator? Mary, are you doing it the long way by hand there? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Is it A times C? You, Jefferson, you felt like six was the one also. Yeah, you know, have you ever read uh, 1984? Yeah. <laughs> the party said. Oh, oh, okay. Well, then we must change it to yeah. six. Yeah. Is there a videotaping in here? Yeah, we don't have to be vaporized. Exactly. It's either negative six eighths. Which would be negative three fourths. Love that. Okay. Or, no, we're, you're confirming for us. What's the other one? Well, I'm a betrayal. One. Okay. I don't have a quadratic formula on my calculator, so. That's okay. You have it in your brain. So, negative three fourths and one are the x-coordinates of our points of inflection. So you're going to need to find the y-coordinates by plugging those into the original uh, equation, uh, which is gross, yes. 
uh, then to do the concave up, concave down thing, we can choose zero again. And if you plug zero into this, you get a positive on top and you get a positive on the bottom. So that means that this is going to be a positive, negative, negative. So concave, concave down, concave up, concave down. Wait, did you plug it into the the second derivative. To find to test for concavity, you plug it into the second derivative. To test for increasing, decreasing, you plug it into the first derivative. To get y values or maximums and minimums, you plug it into the original. Right. Okay, so if you want to make that from a helpful hint, remember that. Uh huh. My helpful hint would be to write it down. <laughs> okay. Uh, y values, maximum and minimums, original function, increasing, decreasing, first derivative. Uh, concavity, second derivative. But why is it the second derivative concavity? Like I understand the That was our entire lesson yesterday. No, I know, but like. Because I'm looking at the slope of the tangent line from now on. Don't ask why. Just say. So, I don't want to plug it in. Negative 3 fourths to That's the first. Okay, you know this game on the calculator? That you can do this on the calculator. So if you type that into, I don't know if I showed you this before. Yeah. So x squared over what was it? What was the original one? X squared plus three. So if you type that into uh, y one, and then you want to evaluate that at some different places, if you go alpha f four, and then you enter, what was it? Negative three fourths. We put a negative point seven five. Yeah, that gives you the y thing, so that gives you that thing. The problem there is that it's a decimal and they, what's that? Okay, so I can make that a fraction also. So yes, yeah, 3 19 well played, sir. So oh, well, you four. can make that a fraction. <coughs> what? Yeah, what was the other one? One? I do it all. I thought right. So you cheat and you get a the other one is one four. Okay. The very first thing under the math menu is uh, please write my answer as a fraction. Alpha one. Alpha, Alpha uh, F four gives you a Y And then the Alpha F one. Uh, Alpha, yeah, you're right. Alpha F one will also give you that one too. Okay. All right. So we're done there. We got her. Uh, okay. And then you said fifteen. Is this the last one? Yeah. Yeah. It's the part that says using the, the second derivative test. Using both the first, oh, so you yeah, want to do the second the derivative test? Okay. That on the other gotcha. Other All other. right, so once again, you have the first derivative from yesterday was 5x to the fourth minus 5. Uh, and then the second derivative is going to be 20x cubed. <clears throat> Okay, so if you're trying to find the local maximum and minimum values, that's where you take the first derivative and set it equal to zero. And if you solve that, you get x equals one, but that has a, is it one and negative one? Yeah. And they both have a multiplicity, or they're both double roots. Oh, they are? So, yeah, because you took the square root to get them. So that's one and negative one, both uh, double roots. Wait, no, yeah. Um, oh, we did this one yesterday. You're right. I not was, one. Yeah, oh. yeah, 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 yeah. Because it came out to be x squared plus 1. My bad. Okay, so they are not. I apologize. I forgot that we uh, had that discussion yesterday. Okay, so. Yeah, yeah, you're right. All right, so yesterday then we figured out whether these were maximums or minimums by doing the increasing decreasing thing. Today they would like us to do that using the second derivative test. So the second derivative test means to figure out what the concavity is. So if I take the second derivative and set it equal to zero, obviously x equals zero. So here is my point of inflection right there. Um, so pick a number that's not zero. One half. One. So if I plug one into the second derivative, I get a positive answer, right? Which means that uh, this is going to be concave up here and concave down there. Okay. So if this is concave. I don't get it. 
No, it's not. It's in this range. It's from negative infinity to zero. It'll be concave down, and from zero to infinity, it'll be concave up. So uh, the x coordinate of it is zero, yeah, zero, three. So if this is concave down, then that means that this must be a maximum. And if this is concave up, then this must be a minimum. Okay, so that's the only difference there is that when you're looking at the second derivative, you're comparing the concavity, and if you're looking at the first derivative, you're just doing increasing, decreasing. Okay. So if you're doing maximum and minimum, why would you just do the first? I know. Um. Seems easier. Okay, that's what they're asking you. Which method do you prefer? So you have weighed in. All right, yeah, so you guys, all right, so the rest of your assignment is the starting at 19 and going up through 65. I'm sure those will be really easy problems. Um, so you can spend today uh, working on those, okay? Uh, tomorrow is going to be, once again, everybody's gone day, is that true? Except for, the last time this happened, they both just skipped class, so it just worked out fine. Uh, all right, so essentially then this assignment is due on Friday, okay? Uh, but please use this time.